Hey there, friends, and welcome back to Another Look. My name is Pastor Derek, and in this week's Another Look, we're going to take a first look at some of the things coming up this upcoming weekend. Uh, we start a new sermon series, digging into the book of Philippians. So I'm not really going to touch on that reading much at all. Our other two readings, though, I, I want to highlight a few things. Another Look is a chance for us to kind of get our minds ready for what's coming on Sunday. And it's a way for us to take a look at some of the readings we may not read uh, or take a look at when we do our readings on Sunday mornings. So let's uh, take a look at Isaiah chapter 55. That's our first reading. Isaiah 55 verses 6 through 9. Um, one of the coolest verses from Isaiah is in this passage. Um, he's got a lot of really cool passages, but Isaiah 55 verse 9 says, uh, or verse 8 rather says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Man, have you ever thought of that, that God is so big? And have you tried to impose your thoughts onto God? I know I do that sometimes when things don't go the way I want them to. Well, well, if I was God, I would. Maybe you've never said those exact words. I really don't know if I have either. Um, but, but the idea is, have you ever challenged the way God was running the world? And I know that sounds super, super sacrilegious, and it sounds really, really negative. But I think a lot of times we we do that, right? We we question how things are running in the world, right? Why why do bad things happen to good people is a question we ask a lot, or why do babies die, or why did my loved one get cancer when the person who committed all these crimes. It doesn't seem to have a health problem at all. We ask questions like this all the time. Why are there tornadoes and earthquakes and hurricanes? And why, why does God let this happen? I think the easiest answer to that question is right here in verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, declares the Lord, neither are my ways your ways. I think what God's getting at in that passage, when, when Isaiah writes this and tells the people that God's thoughts are not our thoughts and that his ways are not our ways, it's, it's God's way of telling us that he sees a bigger picture that we can't see. And I guess maybe the best way for us to understand this is for those of us who are parents, or if you've ever had an, a, a mentoring role over a young person, you give them some guidance. You, you tell them, these are some things you might want to look out for as you make this decision. But yet you let them make their own decisions. You, you let certain things happen. I, I know when I was learning to ride a bicycle, my parents let me fall off the bike. And, and I would often wonder, wow, if you really cared, why would you let me fall? Well, the reality of the matter is if I had never fallen off my bike, I wouldn't have cared about balance because they would have always been there to catch me. I think sometimes the same is true in our lives. God knows way more than we give him credit for knowing. God has the ability to do things we could only imagine. So therefore, God knows more than we do, and maybe we should just submit to what God wants us to do. He goes on in verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways uh, higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Have you ever moved from one position to another and noticed something you hadn't seen before? Maybe you're scanning a room for a person and then you, you, you walk up a flight of stairs and you look off of a balcony or, or a ledge and you realize, wow, they've been there the whole time and I just needed a different perspective. I think that's what Isaiah 55 is all about is helping us get a different perspective, a different perspective on life. Now, if we jump ahead and we go into our, our gospel reading, that's from Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 20. This is one of those passages people tend to question God on too. It's kind of funny. Um, this is the, the story or the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. If you're not familiar with the story, you should probably read it. Open up to Matthew 20 and just read those first uh, 16 verses or so. But this is one where we, we kind of wonder, what's God up to? Uh, they, they even question the the vineyard owner here, right? So, so you have this idea that 
some people come in and, and, and a price is agreed upon for these, these men to work in the vineyard all day. And they go and they work in the vineyard. And, and as they do, he'll give them what's right. And, and he'll, he'll settle on a payment and he'll pay them at the end of the day. And, and then another group comes in about midway through the day. And he says, I'll pay you what's right at the end of the day. And so they go out and they, they, they work their, their day. And at the end of the day, he pays them what, what he thinks they're worth. And the same is true for people who come in right near the end of the day. They, they only work an hour or so. And when it comes time for payment, uh, the people who worked an hour, they, they, they get a, a dollar amount, right? Let's, let's just call it $100. And then the next group comes in and they, they work for four hours and they get $100. And they started to wonder, man, these guys worked for an hour and they got 100 bucks. We worked for four hours and we got 100 bucks. What's going on? And the people who worked all day are in the background going, well, this doesn't seem fair, but I know that when he gets to us, we've worked out in that heat all day long. You're going to give us more. Turns out they all get the exact same amount. Now, now the, the interesting thing about this is, is they, they challenge the vineyard owner. Why would you give us the same amount that you gave those people? They were only here for an hour. Essentially, the answer is, my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Essentially, what, what's happening here is, is, is what Jesus is doing is, is drawing a comparison between the workers in the vineyard and the idea of salvation and, and how some are going to be following Christ all their lives and, and they're going to dedicate their entire life to following him and, and they're going to go to church and they're going to do the tithing routine and they're going to serve in the church and they're going to they're going to serve their community and they're going to be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere they go then there's other people who like the thief on the cross beside Jesus are only going to start following God in the very last moments of their lives but Jesus says, y'all get the same thing. And I think the, the point that Jesus is making in this parable is that, that you don't understand the whole scenario. You, you only look at how much you feel you've done. And I think when it comes to salvation, the point is it's, it's not what you've done anyway. So whether you worked for an hour or you've worked for all of your life, None of it is going to earn you salvation, but only what Jesus did on the cross. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, declares the Lord. I think, I think if we were to approach life with the understanding that God knows more than we know, we might actually start to see some of the things God's doing around us a little bit more vividly. Maybe that's a challenge for this week as we prepare for Sunday is look for the ways that God is working around you. And recognize that uh, it may not be how you would do it. But chances are it sees things you can't see. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, declares the Lord. Let that be something you chew on a little bit over the next couple days as we prepare to gather together for worship. What is God doing that's higher than your thoughts and higher than your ways? All right, friends, have a great weekend. Be well.